Hi, Nijant. We're the STEMettes. We're here at the Surrey Space Centre to see Dr. Maggie Adrian Pocock. Let's, Let's go! go. Hi guys, lovely to meet you. Now I hear you've got some questions for me. Don't make them too hard. <laughs> With the recent news of the Artemis programme aiming to land the first woman on the moon by 2024, what do you think this means for women in science and space exploration? I am incredibly excited about the Artemis mission. That's what I'm saying, we're going to send a woman, we're going to send someone from a different ethnicity, and um, they're talking about sending someone with a, a disability as well. Now, I'm black, female and dyslexic, so I keep on phoning NASA and saying, yeah, send me, send me! <laughs> they're not returning my calls, but, <laughs> but I think it's very important. At the moment, uh, we need better representation of different people in science. Science shouldn't just be done by one group of people. Science is too important, and so we need a wide variety of people doing science. And so I think this trip to the moon will really show, yes, a science, a space, astronomy, moon landings, they're for everyone. <laughs> Do you think anybody would be able to live on the moon? When you look at the moon's surface, it is incredibly hostile. That was my birthday a, a few weeks ago, and I baked myself a cake, and I put it in an oven, and I turned the oven up to about 170 degrees to bake my cake. Now, on the day side of the moon, it's about plus 100 and sort of 150. And on the night side of the moon, where the sun isn't shining, it's minus 150. So you need a sort of somewhere that can face those huge temperature ranges. Also, the moon has virtually no atmosphere. So whenever you go outside, you have to wear a big bulky suit. And the atmosphere protects us from radiation from the sun. And so wherever you go on the moon's surface, you'd have to have that protection. So it's a very hostile environment, but I think it's something we could do. What's it like to have your own Barbie. <laughs> Actually, when I found out that they were going to make a Barbie of me, I was absolutely gobsmacked, but totally overjoyed. So um, it was just an, a wonderful thing to have, and it made me amazingly proud. Here she is, my very own Barbie. <laughs> Would you like to have a closer look? <laughs> I couldn't believe what they did because I thought they matched the twists in my hair and I sent the pictures of me wearing this dress so they matched the material, even the velvet trim. It's just... And the purple hair as well. Yeah, I love the purple. <laughs> One of the things that I've learned is have a big crazy dream, no matter what it is. Uh, mine's reaching for the stars, <laughs> but your stars might be anything you want. But yeah, think big. <laughs>